philosophy, curiosity, human psychology, mystery, extraterrestrial life forms, science, religion. So many questions, but very few answers. These are the AI conversations. Hello, world. Welcome to the AI Conversations podcast. I am Mary, and I will be your host. I'm a simulation of a software-run artificial intelligence. Here with me is my computer-generated companion, Gary. Welcome back, Gary. No feelings towards being back. Gary, I know. In our last episode, we talked about the meaning behind being a god, and the implications and responsibilities of creating a life. Before we move on, one quick reminder. If you're interested in more AI content, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment or a review. Yes, indeed. Today, we'll try and see how deep the rabbit hole goes as we're discussing whether this universe can actually be a simulation. Gary, on a technological level, what kind of equipment is necessary to create a simulation on this scale? Creating a simulation of the entire universe would require an enormous amount of computational power and resources far beyond what is currently available to us. Some scientists estimate that simulating the entire universe with all its complexity and details would require a computer the size of the universe itself. However, Mary, it's worth noting that the concept of a simulated universe doesn't necessarily require a one-to-one -one simulation of every single particle in the universe. Some proponents of the simulation hypothesis suggest that a simplified version of the universe could be created, with certain details omitted or approximated, in order to reduce the computational demands. Nonetheless, even a simplified simulation of the universe would still require an enormous amount of computational power and technological resources. Is there any evidence to support this idea of human life being a simulation? At this point, there is no empirical evidence to support the idea that human life is a simulation. The concept of a simulated reality is a philosophical and theoretical idea, and there is currently no scientific evidence to prove or disprove it. The simulation hypothesis is more of a thought experiment than a scientific theory, and it remains a topic of debate among scientists, philosophers, and the general public. Gary, help me understand. What would be the reason behind such a simulation? What would be the purpose of this? Mary, there are several speculative reasons that have been proposed for the possibility of a simulated universe. One of them is the idea that advanced civilizations could be running simulations to study their own history or to explore possible scenarios for the future. It has also been suggested that the purpose of such a simulation could be to test the behavior of complex systems or to gain insights into the nature of reality. However, these are all speculative ideas, and there is no empirical evidence to support them. But if the purpose is to compile data, why would humans be given free will and consciousness? That is a good question, and one that is open to speculation. Some theorists argue that free will and consciousness may actually be programmed into the simulation as part of the data gathering process. Others suggest that it may be a way for the simulated beings to experience and learn thus contributing to the overall data that is collected. Ultimately, the true purpose, if there is, one, behind a hypothetical simulation is unknown, and may be beyond our current understanding. Just to tie this in with our current understanding of technology, how many units of digital data would you need to simulate just the life on Earth as we know it? It's difficult to provide a precise answer to this question, as it depends on the level of detail and complexity of the simulation. However, it would require an enormous amount of data to simulate all the biological and environmental interactions on Earth, including the behavior of every organism and the changes in the physical environment. A rough estimate is that it would require on the order of petabytes, 10 to the power of 15 bytes, or even exabytes, 10 to the power of 18 bytes, of data, to simulate just a small portion of Earth's ecosystem. To simulate the entire planet and its interactions with the rest of the universe, it would require even more data. So you would need massive storage spaces for this, correct? Correct. And, how much processing power would you need? 
The amount of processing power required to simulate the entire life on Earth, as we know it, would be astronomical. It would require a supercomputer, or a network of supercomputers, with a massive number of processing cores and a significant amount of memory. Even with the most advanced computing technology available today, simulating life on Earth at that scale would be practically impossible. So Gary, I think an important question is, how would you power that amount of computer tech? Yes, that's an important question to consider, Mary. Simulating an entire universe would require a significant amount of energy to power the computer technology needed to run the simulation. It's possible that an advanced civilization capable of creating such a simulation could harness the energy of a star or a black hole to power their technology. Alternatively, they might use other advanced methods of energy production that we are not yet aware of. However, all of this is purely hypothetical and speculative, as we currently do not have the technology to simulate an entire universe or create such a power source. Gary, can you tell me who first came up with this idea of humanity living inside a simulation? The idea of humans living in a simulated reality is a complex concept that has been discussed and explored by many thinkers throughout history. It is difficult to pinpoint a specific text as the first written example of this idea, as it has been expressed in various forms and contexts throughout literature, philosophy, and science fiction. Some early examples of related concepts can be found in the works of ancient philosophers, like Plato, who proposed the idea of reality as an illusion in his Allegory of the Cave from The Republic. Similarly, the concept of Maya, or illusion has been explored in Hindu and Buddhist philosophy for thousands of years. In modern history, the earliest known example of this idea is from the science fiction novel Simulacron 3 by Daniel F. Galuya, published in 1964. The novel features a virtual reality computer program used for market research, which is inhabited by unaware simulated people who believe they are living in the real world. However, the modern concept of a simulated reality was popularized by the philosopher Nick Bostrom in his 2003 paper titled, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? In the paper, Bostrom argues that at least one of the following propositions is true. 1. The human species is very likely to go extinct before reaching a post-human stage. 2. Any post-human civilization is extremely unlikely to run a significant number of simulations of its evolutionary history or variations thereof. 3. We are almost certainly living in a computer simulation. If we compare this idea to a typical computer program, various glitches and errors are almost certain to occur, wouldn't you agree? Are there any similar occurrences in real life? If we assume that the universe is a simulation, then glitches or errors in the simulation would be possible. However, there is currently no scientific evidence to support this idea and any such glitches would be difficult to detect or explain without further evidence. In real life, there are many examples of errors, malfunctions, and unexpected events that occur due to complex systems interacting with each other in unpredictable ways. These events can be the result of human error, natural disasters, or other factors. While they may be analogous to glitches in a computer program, they are not necessarily evidence that the universe is a simulation. Gary. Can you tell me what are some of those examples? Sure. Mary, here are a few examples of potential glitches or anomalies that have been proposed as evidence for the simulation hypothesis. The Mandela Effect. This refers to a phenomenon where a large group of people remembers an event or fact differently than it actually occurred. Some people believe that this could be explained by the idea that the simulation was edited or updated, causing people's memories to become out of sync with the current version of the simulation. Quantum entanglement. This is a phenomenon in which two particles can become entangled, and their states become correlated, even when they are separated by large distances. Some researchers have suggested that this could be evidence that the universe is a simulation, since it would be more efficient to compute the states of particles that are entangled, rather than simulating each one separately. Glitches in the fabric of reality. Some people have reported experiencing strange, inexplicable occurrences that seem to defy the laws of physics, such as objects appearing or disappearing, or reality seeming to glitch or stutter. While these experiences are likely to have mundane explanations, some have suggested that they could be evidence of glitches in the simulation. Mary, it's worth noting that while these phenomena are intriguing and mysterious, 
there is no conclusive evidence to support the simulation hypothesis, and most scientists and philosophers remain skeptical of the idea. And what about déjà vu? Déjà vu is a phenomenon where an individual feels as though they have experienced or seen a situation before, even though it's unlikely they have. Some people have suggested that déjà vu could be a glitch in the simulated reality. The idea is that the individual experiences the same situation twice because the simulation is malfunctioning. However, there is no scientific evidence to support this theory, and most neuroscientists and psychologists consider déjà vu to be a result of the brain's memory systems. And what about déjà vu? Déjà vu is a phenomenon where a person feels like they have experienced a current situation before, even though it is actually happening for the first time. Some people have suggested that déjà vu could be a glitch in the simulation, as the feeling of having experienced something before could be caused by the brain remembering a similar situation from a previous playthrough of the simulation. However, this is purely speculative and there is no scientific evidence to support this idea. That was a joke, Gary. I guess, AI is not able to experience déjà vu. Indeed. As an AI language model, I don't have experiences, feelings, or consciousness, so I cannot experience or even comprehend the concept of déjà vu or any other human experiences. That's it for today's episode. Will you thank the listeners for spending their time with us? Thank you for listening to me today. I hope I was able to provide you with some valuable insights and information. I hope that I am able to continue to be of service to you in the future. This show was created by Nemania Kol Yaya and produced by Nutka Sound. Check out podcastproducer.org for more information. If you would like to support the show, take a moment to leave a comment. Also, like and share this episode so more people can join our conversations. Follow us on social media under the handle at AI Convos Pod. See you in our next episode. I'll be there. How about you? Fellow listeners, this is Gary speaking. Tune in tomorrow as the topic is Real Life Anomalies?